Welcome to the official ABA Law Student Podcast, where we talk about issues that affect law students and recent grads. From finals and graduation to the bar exam and finding a job, this show is your trusted resource for the next big step. You're listening to the Legal Talk Network. Hello and welcome to another edition of the ABA Law Student Podcast on Legal Talk Network. I'm Kareem Arif and I'm the chairman of the law student division of the ABA. I hail from California where I went to law school at the University of California, Davis. On today's show, we'll be interviewing Thomas Kim, the chair elect of the law student division, or at least for a couple more days until he takes over. Our show today is sponsored by the American Bar Association Law Student Division. And in this monthly podcast, we'll be talking to Thomas about his involvement with the ABA, his story, and what he has planned for the law student division in the next year. Thomas, thanks so much for coming on, buddy. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for the invite. So, Thomas, I want to give our listeners some uh, insight into who you are. Where are you from, buddy? I'm from originally from Seoul, South Korea, but I consider Portland, Oregon my home. And how did that come to happen? I moved to the States, uh, to specifically Beaverton, Oregon, 12 years ago. And I've been living in Beaverton, but, um, you know, Portland is such a beautiful city. So I consider Portland to be my home. Now, I know a lot about that transition is sort of influencing the work that you're doing now. Is that the case? Yeah, that's correct. Can Um, you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. When I, you know, first moved to the States 12 years ago with my family legally, uh, because we were moving from South Korea, um, long story short, um, our family was cheated by our immigration attorney and ultimately, uh, lost our status so we became undocumented and since then i wanted to become a lawyer who first of all doesn't cheat and who's able to help the indigenous population who uh like just like my family and that's how i got involved with the with the legal profession and to be a, about the aba specifically and with the work that i'm doing right now i am an undocumented law student and i'm wanting to give back to the community give back to this country And with uh, this legal education I have received, I want to take the bar and to be licensed uh, in the States. Well, let's slow you down there. Let's slow you down because that's fantastic. But so we got, we have this this experience where you're coming over and this attorney who cheated you. Yeah. Right? You have this new change for your family. And then you end up going to college and now you're at law school at Arizona, right? Right. Arizona State? Arizona State. Right. And how did you get involved in the ABA? I got involved with the ABA when I got that email from the ABA Law Student Division saying free membership with all these perks. So why not? So I joined and then I saw another email regarding the election that's coming up. Um, The Law Student Division needed a new secretary treasurer and I decided to run for it. Okay. Did you know what you wanted to do with your position when you first submitted the application to run? Um, Yes and no. No, because I didn't know what job specific descriptions would be other than taking notes and taking care of the the treasury. But yes, because I wanted to make a statement and I wanted to support the the ABA's commitment to diversity. Uh, No matter what role I was serving within the law student division, I knew that I wanted to serve our commitment to diversity. So now when you're serving the commitment and you're talking about coming from this undocumented background, Tell me a little bit about the work you're doing right now. You have a resolution that's coming up, right? That's correct. And so tell me about that. What's, what's going on with this resolution? What is it? This resolution ultimately asks that the American Bar Association support the principle that bar admission should not be denied based solely on immigration status. And the great example of, of this is me, myself. I am I'm highly educated and I, I'm not sure. I simply am not sure whether I'll be able to get admitted to the bar of my choice, which is the state of Oregon, because the state of Oregon simply do not have a precedent of allowing undocumented law school graduates like myself. Well, could you seek some sort of insight so that they could tell you if you'd be able to pass moral character or not based on your status? Is that information available? That was my first thought, too. So I checked out their website and I ended up talking to someone from the Oregon State Bar, essentially asked and about this particular situation, asked what I should be doing. And they said it's case by case. They said I would not be able to find out until I actually apply, which by the time I actually get to apply, it would be too late. So I'm hoping that 
this resolution would be adopted by the American Bar Association, that it would become the policy of our Bar Association, and that ultimately all 50 states and territories would begin to allow undocumented law school graduates to be able to sit for the bar and to begin contributing to our country in a very meaningful manner, whether it's pro bono, whether it's getting involved with the nonprofits or whatever it is. That's fantastic, Thomas. And as I understand it, there really isn't any opposition within the ABA to pushing this forward thus far. Isn't that true? That is true. Actually, I am just coming back from the Rules and Calendar Committee's meeting, and I just checked, and there is no salmon slip against this resolution. Or rather, there are a few uh, salmon slips in support of the resolution. So it's exciting times, and it's more exciting because earlier today at uh, reception, I ran into Paulette Brown, who is a past chair of the ABA, who showed great support for this resolution and who was more than willing to support and speak on behalf of this resolution, except she said she didn't see, uh, foresee any opposition, therefore she would only speak if her statement is needed. So that was a great encouragement from her. So it sounds like she said she thinks this is going to go no problem without a hitch. <laughs> it's not even going to require the speakers in favor. Is that yes, right? Yes, absolutely. And that's exciting. That's exciting time for the American Bar Association and the future of our legal industry. So you're telling me you're about to kick off your year as chairman of the American Bar Association's law student division with essentially an uncontested resolution that would revolutionize the legal profession and bring back equity and fairness to our careers. Uh, I is guess that, so. Yes, that is correct. You don't like to start very hard, do you? Uh -huh. Like low levels, right? Low bars. Uh, that's that, fantastic. Now yes. that is fantastic. So tell me then, starting at this high level, what's next? What do you have planned for this year? I want to take advantage of the hard work that has been put in by the current board and the current chair, Kareem, and by you know predecessor SBA presidents as well as ABA reps. And I want to do so. I want to take advantage of the, all of that hard work by making sure that ABA Law Student Division actually becomes a policy drafting organization that it is supposed to be. My How are you going to do that? Yes. Uh, my goal is to triple the number of resolution that is going before the House of Delegates next annual 2018. And I want to make sure that law student division is actually serving the law students in a tangible and substantive manner. So you want to triple it. Is it just a matter of numbers or do you have policy ideas for oh, what you want to put forward with these resolutions? It's absolutely not just about the numbers, but numbers do show us our commitment for our law students. I do have a couple ideas as this week has been an amazing networking as well as connecting with the new delegates as well as all of the assembly members. One of the ideas is for law students to be able to sit for the bar six months prior to the actual date that the regular law students would be able to sit for the bar. So they'd take the bar exam in February is what That's you're saying? That's correct. Six months earlier than the usual. And then they would spend the rest of the time working for nonprofits and the like? That's right. That's uh, our great commitment for pro bono because we know that our pro bono work for the indigenous population as well as worthy ideas and worthy causes is, is very important to us, not just law student division, but for the ABA as a whole. What else are you thinking about? So that's one policy area. What other ideas do you have coming down the pipes? Um, I won't be able to tell a whole lot about this, but we do have an education package uh, that's coming down the pipeline that would ultimately better the legal education for all law students in the U.S. And that's all I'll tell you today, but do check with me again in six months uh, about the resolutions. I, I cannot wait to see what comes out of your amazing group and what you put to work, especially given the amazing start that you're off to, my friend. Oh, thank um, you, Kareem. It has been an absolute pleasure for our listeners. I've been able to work with Thomas for the last couple months, and uh, I cannot wait to see what you put together. Now, if people want to get involved or contact you, is there a way they can do that? Oh, absolutely. I do prefer emails. Uh, my email is 123thomaskim at gmail.com. 123thomaskim at gmail.com. Easy as 123. Yep. Fantastic. All right, Thomas, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. To our listeners, we hope you've enjoyed another episode of our Law Student Podcast. We would like to encourage you to subscribe to the ABA Law Student Podcast on iTunes and take a moment to rate and review us as well. You can also reach us on Twitter at ABA LSD using the hashtag Law Student Podcast. 
We want to hear what's on your mind. Signing off, I am Kareem Arif, and we want to thank you for listening to the ABA Law Student Podcast. Stay tuned, expect more, dare to dream, and until next time, podcasters. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS, find us on Twitter and Facebook, or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. Remember, U.S. law students at ABA-accredited schools can join the ABA for free. Join now at AmericanBar.org forward slash law student. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.